All right, welcome Summit Academy family again. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So once again, now, um, I don't wanna to take too much into deep diving into this because it's something we've already looked at as a passage already, <laughs> but I just kinda of wanna show some helpful tools when moving further into this whole situation, okay? Now, I am going to tell you here, again, first round, people do this. They'll read the passage first, okay? So they're gonna read this passage first. They would take it, they would go through it, which I'd always recommend if you're gonna do it this way, okay. I would just go through the passage all the way through as best as you can, in the sense that you have a basic understanding of what this passage is about, okay? Second, reread. I know, Mr. Wisniewski, are you kidding me right now? You're telling me to read something twice? Well, of course I am, because that's how we make meaning of something. If I only read something once and said, oh, I'm good, and then had to answer questions about it, I mean, my memory isn't all that great, everybody. I'm going to be honest with you right now. Now, some people do have great memories, but my memory, ugh. So, but if you know you're like, yeah, I got to look it over a few times, make sure you do this next approach. So we read it through the first time. And then the next second time, we then start breaking it down, okay? And what we can do is we can kind of go through and go by segments, okay? Chunk by chunk, if you will. And this one's going to be a little different because usually I call this a paragraph by paragraph approach. And usually that only occurs when we have like a lot of um, big old paragraphs in a passage, okay? But like, let's say this first break, here we can go that way and we can go that way okay okay so you, what you can do is as you're going through and you have a passage that looks like this you know with some one line things and some little long parts take it down and just kind of bracket it off okay break it down some okay so that way we can help make better meaning and better understanding of what we read okay sounds good excellent all right moving on I also want to look at a different approach as well because some people do this and again it's an amazing skill and I appreciate it all the time okay all right so here we go boom all right so here is what we can do people look at the questions first as well they kind of you know, if you have it in printed form, you just kind of, you know, kind of divvy up between the actual reading passage and the um, questions. Okay, that way they're side by side, which is a good approach. And if we have the online, if I give these to you online, um, then there's a button you can actually click that will give you the side by side. And it actually is fun because it looks like um, the ELA end of course test, you know, style, like how you have the passage on one side and the questions on the other. So I like that feature. Um, but again, people like to preview the questions. You know, what is a sestina? What's the structure of the story? All this other stuff, yada, yada, yada. So that way, when you go through it, your brain's kind of activating as you're reading the passage. And I want to say this. I, if I was you, okay, I love reading the questions part, but I would say read the, look through the passage first. Just the passage, just don't even... Don't mark nothing. Just just look through the passage first. Then, if you want, go through and look at the questions. What are the questions asking? Then we can go back and dive into the passage. And why is this going to work out? I'm going to kind of dive into the second round of the video series here in a little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> so, and then in this case, I'm also going to um, program it as how we would see it um, in the online version, okay? Now, if I was taking this paragraph by paragraph approach, okay, or the section by section, notice here, just in the very first chunk, if I went to preview the questions, the first question is asking, what is a sestina, okay? Look here when I break it down. Breaking down that first segment. Do you know what Sestina is, Grace asked? Sounds painful, Pete said. 
says the Sestine has a 900-year-old poetic structure, said Grace, in which six stanzas are each composed of six lines, and at the same words that end in the first six lines are repeated as endings of the six lines in each stanzas, except, of course, the order in which the words are reconfigured according to a set pattern. Did you guys spot that we already answered the question to number one? Remember, the question number one was asking, what is a sestina? And by golly, look at this. Watch this. I'm going to do this in yellow. Whoa, look at that. A sestina is a 900-year-old poetic structure. Oh, my gosh. We literally just answered the very first question. Look at you all go. Look at that. Just look at all that. Just, you know. For, for you who don't understand what Mr. Wisniewski is doing, but remember that when Mr. Wisniewski was in um, art subbing a lot last year and some this year um, to help out, um, Bob Ross videos were like the, the staple at times because, you know, fun stuff. All right. <laughs> so let's look at this. Oh, look at that. Oh, well, OK. I don't know that I did that, but it's OK. So, but look here. And then, no, no, no. Oh, look, it's D. <laughs> See, look at that. One out of 10 questions we already know we got right. So, good job. Pat on the back for you. Woo, woo. Okay. <laughs> All right, Mr. Zinski, you're doing too much. I know. I'm sorry. But again, so what we did there, right? We took this small section. And then you could have either circled it, you can underline it. If you have highlighters at home, highlight it. Um, if you just have a pencil or a pen, just, you know, again, you know, mark the brackets and then just underline or circle, if you will, you know, you can circle. So, you know, circle things. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next part. Oh, I kind of, kind of goofed on that bracket part there, but, you know, so we took this one chunk here. This one section here, we broke it down into two segments, two chunks. Ah, remember from the one video, chunking? All right. So, next part, here we go. Once again, go through the passage. Break them down. Notice here how we have a lot here and these first two, but not enough here. And this next part, look at that. Boom, chunk it. Perfect. Go through it. Make meaning of what this chunk is about. If we look here, we're do do do. She's explaining how this structure works. Okay? More parts of how the structure of this poem works. So you can, you know, underline again. You can circle. You can do a lot of things, okay, as you're going along. Keep doing that method. Keep breaking it down. And yes, some chunks may be different than the others. Three there, three there, okay? Breaking it down, doing the best that you can. Now, I do understand when you're doing this online, though, um, it's going to be a little harder. But you will have the ability to highlight items. So that's why it's another great thing that I want to do is when we're looking at the actual view, if we were to do this online. Okay. But in this first round of the segment, I just wanted to show you that this is an approach that you can take when actually looking at the passage. Again, I would say what they call cold read the passage first. Go through the passage. Don't mark anything, nothing. Just read through it, decode it the best you can. Okay. Then... You can do one of two things. You can then go back to the passage and then break it down and make marks and things of that nature. Or you can go preview the questions and then go back and break down the passage, okay? All right. I am going to see you in the next segment. Have a good one.